With the discussion of whether or not homosexuality is genetic comes the inevitable conversation of whether or not it can be affected by genetic manipulation. As we move into a future where it may be possible to modify our baby's physical traits before they're even born, could the same be possible for sexual orientation? This is the main reason why there is some resistance as to whether or not we should even be studying if being gay is genetic. Some queer people actually think that studying this continues to other us as if it's like a quest for why we are different. And some are genuinely afraid that the more we learn that we would actually be able to physiologically turn off homosexuality. And I mean, it does make sense. Famous scientists of the past have tried to use science to explain why homosexuals' brains were smaller or how homosexuality was actually a result of defective development. And in extreme times, the Nazi regime tried to understand homosexuality from a biological basis in order to eventually eliminate it. For this reason, when it was first discovered that there might be a gay gene, scientists were actually nervous about the reaction from the gay community. But it was actually a pretty positive reaction. For the first time, being gay was normalized for many people around the globe, and it wasn't necessarily just because of a traumatic childhood experience or a sick choice. Even today, people are being killed around the world because others think they've made a choice of being gay. And so the more we can understand the genetic background of homosexuality, the more we can mitigate the types of punishments that gay people are receiving around the world. I personally had to use this information as a teacher. I felt that it was really important to come out to my students, so I did. And during parent-teacher interviews, a group of parents came to me and they said that they were worried that I was gonna make their kid gay. So this is really helpful for me because in those moments I can say, well, it's mostly genetic, so if they are gay, <laughs> probably your fault. Many people want to claim that homosexuality is just a social construct, including many religious leaders and conservative thinkers. But these statements are always based in opinion, whereas scientists, while they agree there's a lot of different factors that could include environment or hormonal changes in the mother's body, there are literally studies to show genetic links. And saying it's just a social construct leads to things like the awful homophobic practices of aversion therapy. So, can you get rid of homosexuality? When it comes to the concept of genetics and CRISPR, in theory, yes, you could. CRISPR is as revolutionary as people say it is, and in theory, you could do so many things with it, and human trials have already started. Your genes control everything about you, and there may not necessarily be a gay gene, but from a biological perspective, yes, being gay is likely highly controlled by genetics. Currently, CRISPR is a really new idea, but as they perfect it and begin to understand the role in which epigenetics plays on being gay, in the future, we might actually be able to understand fully from a physiological perspective why every single person becomes gay. And yes, that could easily be used against us. I think it's pretty fair that gay people have some fears and reservations given that it's only recently that society has begun to understand these issues and in the West, for example, we've only recently began to legalize gay marriage. But that doesn't mean that things can't reverse. I mean, hello America, your current administration literally did not say a word about Pride Month in 2017. This is a clear sign that moving forward gay rights are not a priority in any sense. CRISPR in theory is so powerful and in the wrong hands could do a lot of damage, so we can only hope that attitudes continue to shift positively, otherwise the lives of gay people around the world are at risk. Maybe this is why this research into the genetics of being gay is so important, to help positively shift the attitudes towards gay people around the world before CRISPR progresses so fast that it's used against us. It's also important to understand that female sexuality is understudied. This is likely due to the fact that men continue to predominate the science field, as well as the stereotype that female sexuality is too complex or that lesbians are rarer than gay men. So also moving forward when having this discussion, it's really important that we put female perspectives at the the forefront so they don't continue to be underrepresented. If it can happen to gay people, it could happen to any multitude of peoples around the world, which is why it's important that we're all staying engaged and staying vocal when we need to. Within doing our research, we just found so many fascinating issues coming up, and that's why we wanted to make this video so that we could share with you sort of like a more social context on the video we made on ASAP Science. So let us know what you think about it. It's a pretty intense topic, but we're curious about your opinions. Otherwise, make sure you're subscribing for more. We'll release a new video soon. You can follow us on socials, obviously, and uh, we'll see you next time. <laughs> Peace. Peace.